going on, Vulcan Turtle family? I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Hey, real quick, look at this thing. You, you, you see this thing? That's the face of a menace, baby. That's right, I took Oink alone to a third place finish at a local challenge recently. I decided to play something fun, something different, something that was completely off the meta and something that probably didn't stand a chance. But we ended up placing third and I realized how good Oink alone is into a lot of different matchups. We played quite a few games. We played uh, the two that I love the most were definitely against Mew and Gardevoir and they were a lot of fun. And I gotta say, the deck is probably deserving a little bit more props than it truly gets. So let's get onto the deck list so you guys can check it out for yourself. A big thank you to PTCGO Store for sponsoring the channel. You guys can check out the link in the description where you can use code VulcanTurtle at checkout to save 5% on your order for your code card needs for PTCGO or PTCGL. Thank you again PTCGO Store for sponsoring the channel. Thank you Fantasy TCG for sponsoring the channel. If you guys want to go and save money on IRL product, check out the link in the description to save 5% on your order with coupon code VulcanTurtle to get all your IRL PTCG needs. Thank you again Fantasy TCG for sponsoring the channel. Now, normally I would have this in Limitless so that way you guys can see the entire list, but don't forget you can check out the entire list in the description and I want you to see Big Pig in all of its glory. Big Pig here, Oink Alone EX, is a 260 HP stage 1 with an attack called Maddening Scent. For 1 energy, you do 10 damage. But which is terrible, but you do 30 more damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon And we are in a format where people love to fill up their benches. Just think of a lot of different decks out there uh, Lost box fills up the bench and if they have two Pokemon on the bench, you're knocking out come phase with one energy uh, I don't know Lugia fills up the bench sometimes a lot of decks love to fill up the bench including Gardevoir that thing is always got five on the bench So whatever deck you could think of it usually wants to fill up the bench fast and it wants to fill it up with all of its like baby pokemon so they can start building them up and that is kind of how the format is going oh i almost forgot maridon maridon loves having five pokemon on the bench but yeah i mean just about every meta deck that you can think of right now loves to have a full bench and it's kind of hard to play around not having a full bench because maddening scent will just increase the damage output the longer the game goes on and the more pokemon you have in play so doing things minimalistically for some opponent opponents isn't going to work out for them however Oink Alone does have one more attack that we can talk about. Heavy Stomp. Three energy is required. 210 damage, and then you flip a coin. If Tails during your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack, which isn't all too bad in my opinion. I think that is perfectly fine because at least you do get the chance to flip a coin, but you can start setting up Pokemon for huge KOs with the Maddening Scent, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, we are playing four copies of Lechonk, the 70 HP one, because 70 is better than 60 because Sableye is a menace. Oh, and we play three Oink alone. Now, for the engine, uh, the draw engine, we do have two Bidoof with Carefree Countenance. Now, this uh, protects us from Greninja, which is nice. And we play two copies of a barrel with Industrial Incisors and one copy of Squavit. Squavit's Nest Stash is an extremely powerful ability where you can shuffle your hand, put it at the bottom of the deck, and draw one card. If that card is usable, you can play that card and then draw five with Barrel. If it's not usable, you could draw four, but you are ensuring that you're seeing new, fresh cards every turn with this engine which is great. We played two copies of Klefki. Klefki is actually pretty good in this because you want to kind of get set up and you need to get set up rather quickly and sometimes that doesn't happen but with two Klefki in action you're able to stop lost box decks that usually want to go turbo on you and you can really start setting up those Lechonks to get them into Oink Loans as fast as possible. Now, for the actual trainer cards, we're just going to glimpse over these real quick. There's really nothing too crazy in here except for one card that I do want to talk about in depth a little bit. We have four copies of Level Ball because setting up is extremely important. We have two copies of Nest Ball because of the same reason. We do play three copies of Pokegear 3.0. Consistency is key with this and finding Charon's Care is pretty hard to do if you can't like draw into it with the barrel and all that so looking at the next top seven and finding your Charon's care or even something like judge or boss's orders is extremely important so pokey gear 3.0 at three is a really really good card we got three copies of switch sometimes you start with a pokemon that you don't really want to start with or maybe you just want to get out of clef key because you have it all set up switch is a really good card for those instances and playing them at three is pretty nice a lot of decks like this aren't playing a huge amount of switch 
switching options, but I think three is a really good and solid number for us. Now, we have three copies of Ultra Ball because finding Oink alone is not only important, but also finding the barrel is pretty important since it has 120 HP. We're not finding that with Level Ball. Four copies of Path to the Peak. Path to the Peak is a little bit underplayed right now, but it helps you in a lot of matchups like Gardevoir, Lugia, and Muse. So, really good card here. We do have ourselves a two copies of Boss's Orders. Two is fine. You could go up to three, but I wouldn't really know what to cut. You could cut a Charon's Care because we are playing Charon's Care at four. It's a little over the top when it comes to Sharon's care but honestly it is coming so clutch having that many in the deck that it's just it, it has to be a four of card and then we got four copies of Colrus's experiment you don't need every card in the deck especially when it comes to specific matchups there may be times where you just don't need specific cards Colrus also allows us to draw three cards and Lost Zone 2, allowing us to see more of our deck and keep certain cards in our hand that we don't necessarily want to judge away or even research away. So that's why we don't play research in this deck. But speaking of Judge, we do play four copies of Judge. Now, the wild card here. Roseanne's backup was actually super clutch at my challenge. The reason being is that it's one of the only cards in standard format that specifically calls out stadium cards and energy cards not basic energy energy cards and i can hear you guys in the back vulcan vulcan what about silene silene no absolutely not silene yes can get anything from the discard into the deck but on a coin flip with this you don't have to worry about it at all and considering that we do have the requirement for all of these effects we use them now we can get a pokemon from our discard into the deck which is pretty significant because if we had to get rid of like something like Manaphy early or Barrels early or even an Oink alone early, we can get it back into the deck. A tool card, one of the most important tool cards in this deck is full face guard and losing it early is not great. So being able to put it back into the list is also extremely good. We get a stadium card. Now there are times where you're going to throw away your path to the peak so they get bumped a little bit too much. Now, we can get one of these back with the Roseanne's backup, essentially making it a five path to the peak deck, which is super clutch in a lot of situations, but shuffle and energy from your discard pile into your deck. That's right. Not basic energy, energy. So that means we can get any energy we want, including one of our four double turbos and one of our four V guard energy. So this deck is literally pretty optimized to be tanky as possible. We could play Gardevoir, but it does doesn't help that we play four paths so Gardevoir is out but we do have the three copies of full face guard which will stop our opponent from doing 20 damage from us and if we're up against v pokemon we reduce that by 30 so that's a 50 total against v pokemon 260 hp essentially giving you 310 in v matchups so really really good deck i enjoy it and don't forget you can check out the description where the full deck list is there for you guys so you can plug it into your ptcgl and let me know what you changed or what you guys think of the list but let's just go right into a game now i know you guys are itching to see the big pig in action so let's just let's just jump into a game huh Wait, before we actually get into our game, have you checked if you're subscribed to the channel yet? I would hate for you guys to miss out on any content that I make here, so definitely scroll down and check if you are subscribed to the channel. It really helps us out here, and I want to keep making videos for all of you, and I hate for you to miss any. So check if you're subscribed, hit the subscribe button, like the video, and make sure you turn on notifications so when I do upload, you don't miss it. But I'll, I'll stop. This is the, you Go watch the game. Go watch the game. All right, guys, here we go into our game with the pig, the demon pig. It doesn't sniff for truffles, buddy. It just doesn't. It sniffs for blood. This thing is insane. It's a good deck. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Mew is actually a really easy matchup as well, so I'm kind of like praying that's what we're going up against here. Gardevoir can be difficult because uh, Zacian can kind of swing right over it, no problem. But we'll see. We're here on the ladder. There's a lot of things that could be here on the ladder, so... We'll, we'll find out what we're up against here in just a second. This is not a good hand. This is actually a terrible hand. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? At least we're going to get a mulligan. It looks like we're up against Maridon. Maridon can actually be pretty difficult because if it's the Regilecki version, we're in trouble. And we are in trouble because then they're going to build up a lot of stuff. Now, we did find a Clef key, which is nice because then we can stop Tandem Unit from happening which is usually something that they want to rely on. We did find a Bidoof, though, which is nice. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to attach and retreat into my Klefki here. See if we can stop this Maridon from setting up. Uh, I don't want a Pokegear yet. We'll wait a turn. We'll pass. We will pass and see what we can obtain off the top deck. 
and the Poke Gear. Now, Raichu is the biggest reason why this deck can be very difficult to beat. Raichu can just swing over anything. And once Maridon gets set up, Raichu can be a legit menace. So it's something that we have to take into consideration. But with seeing Raichu here, it makes me feel confident that we are not against the Regilecki version. But it also does spark fear because... Raichu is a problem like that thing we can't actually oko it that's the big thing we can't oko it we'll see what we can do though we'll see what we can do we do have piggy in hand we have bidoof into the barrel we have an attach for the turn hopefully we can find a switch and at least do some damage to the Raichu uh but we'll see we will see another Charon's care does not help in any way shape or form does that help us yeah we're just gonna have to Let's Poke Gear. All right, we got ourselves a Chorus, which I suppose isn't the worst thing. I'm going to draw two before I Chorus. It might not be the right sequencing, but all right, cool. We got ourselves another Piggy. It's very nice. Can we get a Switch, though? We do get a Switch, which is very, very good. We're going to have to choose to get rid of a boss, aren't we? I really don't want to have to do that. Yeah, we're going to keep our bosses. We're going to keep our bosses. I feel like it's not good to get rid of those bosses' orders. So, yeah, we'll come up with the Oink Alone here. And we'll swing. So I think the most that they can do is they attach for the turn. Then they flappy twice. That's five. So yeah, they can still get a knockout with five, which is very, very, very scary. But if they can't knock us out because they can't find the flappies or anything, we're going to be in a pretty good position. Pretty good position because then we can like Sharon's care up the Oinkalone. The Magna Zone is also scary too. The Magna Zone is also very scary. <laughs> However, I am happy that we did decide to keep the uh, bosses. Very happy about that. Yeah, things just got a little scarier because now they can like really hunt down the Klefki and the uh, Lechonk. Okay, they're going to go for the Dynamic Spark here. They're going to do some damage for sure. They're going to do some damage for sure. 90 damage. Discarding two. Okay, well, at least we have the Charon's Care in the hand, which is nice. So we're going to go ahead and pick up our our oink alone going with lechonk evolve the homie put that down we'll go here and i don't really want to get rid of a charon's care or anything else in my hand but we do need to dig a little bit deeper mm, or do we right now i don't think we really need to dig deeper right now i do want to get another lechonk down because i know that he's gonna magnezo knock out our lechonk but honestly i mean he's not gonna touch our oink alone though yeah, you know what? We're just gonna maddening send for the knockout, baby. See you later, Raichu. That is a late game threat we do not need to deal with right now. <laughs> Get our two prizes, and it is an Oinkalone and a double turbo, so actually not bad prizing there. Although, I mean, we are gonna lose our Lechonk. That's the one downside. We're gonna lose our Lechonk. Now, the, the interesting thing is that uh, our opponent did decide to get rid of an energy that's on the Raichu to attack last turn, which means that the EXP share did not go off, which is pretty funny. I like that, so... Less energy on the board right now, which is good. Because if they do decide to, like, tandem unit bring out Raichu again, that's going to be a problem. Okay. Let's see what they tandem unit for. If they do bring out another Raichu, yeah. Uh, you best believe I'm going to boss that thing out and smack it. <laughs> like, the rest of these are not as big of a threat as Raichu is. So, we're definitely going to boss that thing out. Try and get some decent damage on it. And uh, move on with our day. We're going to hit it with a Maddening Scent. I know it's only 160. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll bring up the Klefki. We'll bring up the Klefki. At least it'll stop. Well, I mean, the Klefki doesn't really do much, though. Okay, they're bringing up the Maridon. Yeah, honestly, at this point, we kind of just have to attach or treat, right? Oh, cool. We got the path, though, so that's that's decent. Yeah, we're going to have to attach or treat. Thank goodness we do play Roseanne, though. All right, so let's go ahead and bring up our Oinkalone. We can boss out that Raichu now. We will evolve this one to stop this Magnezone from getting a KO on it. And it does allow us to actually use Industrious Incisors for one now. So that's good. Manaphy's dope. So now we're chilling. We don't have to worry about that uh, Magnezone's V-Star attack at all now. So we're, we're kind of just relaxing now. We're chilling. We are chilling. We're set up. We are happy. The only thing that can make this a little bit better is if we got ourselves like Squavit so we can just start looping everything. Okay, so now Flaffy's in play, and that's scary. But, uh, yeah, that, that Electro Star attack's not doing anything. And honestly, I'd rather just knock out this Raichu. I don't even think it's worth, like, bossing anything out. 
Uh, we can attach this here. I'm cool with it. Not that big of a deal. We will industrious incisors, grab one card to judge. Yep, we're going to maddening set and get a knockout on Raichu. Getting rid of the Raichus right now is extremely important because it's the only Pokemon in Maridon that can actually swing over us. So that is like a real big sigh of relief there for us. Now, whatever they bring up, we attack into. If they try to retreat it for any reason on the next turn, we saved our boss's order so that way we could boss it back out and take a knockout on it. So we're, we're pretty much solid for winning this game. We are solid for winning this game. And you saw how like Klefki on turn one kind of stopped the tandem unit. So we were like, they had to force themselves to like get set up this way, like singly. And then they were able to tandem unit later, but it gave us the opportunity to actually set up our pig. So Klefki in here is actually pretty nice. And it works even better in the lost box matchup too. Don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. Okay. Greninja coming into play here. One of the only Pokemon that, uh, right on can't search. Uh, another Bidoof. Don't really need the Bidoof. We'll go ahead and attach this here so we're maximum minus 50. We'll Maddening Scent do 160 to Raikou. I don't think that there's any way that they can win this game now. We're kind of chilling. We are relaxing. But yeah, in most matchups, I mean, honestly, this is, one, this is a very scary matchup. I think they definitely messed up by getting that Raichu out uh, so early. Like, they, they started Raichu, I, I believe. No, they started, they actually started Maridon, then got Raichu down. I would have held on to my Raichu so that way we could have swung over Oinkalone. So they definitely misplayed here. And that's something that you could take into consideration as well when you're uh, playing this deck in the future. Is that your opponent may not actually know what to do in these scenarios and might throw because they don't know what to expect. So that's something that you can uh, really take to the bank there. All right, Magnet Grip going to be doing a total of 130 damage so it's going to be two hit ko so same as before two hit ko uh however they did judge us and we lost our boss so we do need to be able to find our boss's orders again which is a little bit sad but we'll see what we can do pokey gear okay uh i kind of want to save that spot for a squabbit pokey gear give us boss ah, it's a charon's care oh it's a charon's care it's a Charon's Care. Um, yeah, let's pick up the Oinkalone. <laughs> let's pick up the Oinkalone. What's what's wrong with doing that? Go in here, and then we can... Oh, we shouldn't have actually attached that DTE. We shouldn't have done that, actually, now that I think about it. But you know what? Maddening Scent. It's still going to be a two-hit KO either way. 140 damage. You can keep your little escape rope, and you can keep your electric generator. I'm fine with it. The minute you escape rope, I'm giving you the cleft key, and you're not stopping me. You're not stopping me. So yeah, if our opponent thought that they were going to be able to get a knockout on that Oinkalone before, they are sorely mistaken because uh, Oinkalone is safe after a Charon Scare. So not really worried at this point. We're kind of just happy that we were able to get away with that. Okay, a lot of Dynamotors coming into play here. Seeing so, you know, all go on to the Flaffy can be concerning because it does mean that uh, we could possibly see an Ampharos play. An Ampharos play would be devastating, so we'll see what we can do. But we have a lot of damage on board, so at this point, we're just kind of hoping to hit a boss's orders. Squave, let's go, baby. Let's go ahead and evolve this pig. Uh, yeah, we are going to Squave it away. Well, let's just nest dash here. This is where the NG can really shine. Okay, so we did not get anything there. Let's go ahead and Industrious Incisors. And we got the boss's order. So that is why the Squave and Barrel is such an extremely powerful duo. It's a great draw engine in just about every deck. So yeah, we're just going to Heavy Stomp here. Take out the Magnazone. And that's it, baby. See you later. This is actually a deck that like topped eight originals as well. If you stop and take it into consideration, Oink alone stopped it. Now, our opponent probably did misplay by putting those Raichu down a little too early. It would have held one, but hey, at the end of the day, that's on them, not on us. We are taking the W. We're going to take some ladder points as well. That plus 20, very nice. And uh, that is the deck. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching today's video. I truly appreciate it. And if you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that little red button down there with the bell. If you click that bell, you'll get notified whenever I upload, which is going to be a lot soon. 
Um, today's video is a little bit of an experiment as well. It's a lot shorter to my other videos, and that's because I want to know something. Do you guys enjoy these shorter videos where we kind of go in a little more depth in the game where we're talking about the deck and showing off a little bit more of what it can do? Or do you like these longer videos where we're playing multiple games with different matchups and stuff like that? I really want to know what you guys enjoy so that way I can continue making content that you love to digest here and it, it would really help me out a lot. So at the end of the day, I'll do whatever you guys really want me to do when it comes to the length and stuff like that, which you guys expect from the channel. I'll do my best to make sure that I can meet those demands. But that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, stay safe and be kind.